Hi, welcome to my workshop. I would like to take you on a journey of converting the very high-end 3D printer that cost about $100,000 20 years ago to a CNC machine. I got the printer from one of our forums from very kind person who did not have space to store it and the machine needed a lot of fixing before it could be useful. The printer was made by company 3D Systems and the model was Thermojet, intended for printing wax. The printer was of course too big for my small workshop as well, since its weight was around 400 kg and the size was huge. I knew that I would not use it as it was, since it was quite an old machine and I did not have any need for additional 3D printer. If you want to see how I completed the conversion with highest precision, accessible tools and for lowest price I would encourage you to follow the series. I would also like to mention that the mill and the lathe I am using are from local makerspace that I have access to. If you want to start with similar project and you don't have expensive machinery yourself, I would suggest that you find the access to such machines since they make machining precision parts very easy. When I got the machine home, I immediately started to strip it down to the bare metal. I kept most of the functional parts and discarded a lot of others. I knew that there were a lot of useful mechanical parts in the printer itself and after seeing the casting I immediately decided to convert it to CNC. The machine was made in the USA so most of the dimensions were in inches which presented some challenges for me as an European metric guy. Most of the mechanical hardware, rails, ball screws etc were made by Thompson and were of a high quality. All the rails were already installed. The main casting was probably machined in one setup, so all the machined surfaces and mounts for rails were perpendicular or parallel to each other to a high degree of precision. That was also the main benefit for conversion, since I could rely on them for attaching the other mechanical parts. I wanted to get the 3D model of the casting since it would make the conversion a lot easier and I would be able to model everything in CAD. I optimistically sent the company 3D Systems that built the printer a very kind email with a request for the model but I did not get the reply. All right, then keep your secrets. I decided to flip the casting horizontally compared to how it was in the 3D printer. The size of the travels left me with almost no other option but to mount the spindle in the horizontal orientation and make a horizontal CNC. I was very happy with the solution since I knew that I could get the most rigidity that way and the machine would leave me with 500 to 600 mm of travel in x-axis and 200 to 250 mm of travel in y and z axis. That also solved the problem of short z-axis in most of the small DIY CNC machines and routers and I would be able to mount quite big parts that I could machine. That was especially beneficial for machining enclosures and other big parts for my other projects. The problem with rails was that I did not have enough blocks to use with the existing rails and I could not source them at a reasonable price. There were about 5 useful blocks but I needed about 10 of them for the X and Y axis. The Z axis had 4 blocks that were in a very good condition and were also adjustable but most importantly they were already mounted so I did not have to change them. I first thought about replacing all the rails with new linear hardware, but the problem was with the longer axis. All the other axes had flat machined surfaces under the existing rails and the rails were mounted on removable supports, so I would be able to remove them and board on the new rails, 
but the longest axis had aluminum support that was part of the casting and was machined with a radius to accept the rail. So I would have to machine it down flat if I wanted to replace the rails. But for doing that I would need a lot of setup time to maintain the precision with the other axis and the other problem was the length of the rail was 1.1 meter and I did not have access to the milling machine with that much travel. So I decided to keep all the rails and make my own bearing blocks for the existing rails. The two part series of making them is already on my channel, so you are welcome to watch it after this video. For moving the axis I already had one ball screw from the printer itself, which was suitable for one of the shorter axes. I used it for the Y axis. I also had one quite big ball screw from another project which already had the fixed bearing and the motor mount. It was used for the z-axis since it needed to move a lot more weight. I only needed to buy one longer ball screw for the longest axis. All the rails were already mounted so I had to attach the ball screws on the already machined surfaces of the casting and connect them to the moving parts. It was quite a challenge so a lot of thought went into a good placement of the ball screws and motor mounts for the highest precision. I wanted a spindle with tool holders so the tool changes would be fast. The best available option was ISO 20 tool holder. It was nice and small so it was quite suitable for the machine that size. The spindle for that would be quite expensive, but the biggest problem was the length of the spindle with pneumatic cylinder. I was quite constrained with the length of the spindle because of the stick out from the Y axis. I wanted to make a DIY ISO 20 spindle because I already had the angular contact bearings and most of the parts for the build. It would also let me mount the motor next to the spindle and make a belt driven connection so it would be as short as possible. But my free time was limited and I could not spend the time needed for the DIY version so I decided to buy an 800 watt ER11 spindle as a start. After the CNC will be finished and I'll be able to use it, I will maybe invest time into making a DIY ISO 20 spindle. The two other major parts that needed to be made were Y axis mount with the spindle clamps and the X axis table. I had most of the aluminum plates for the project but still had to buy some. I also had to make a bunch of smaller parts for attaching other functional parts of the machine. All the machining will be shown in the series as well as all the thoughts that I had during the conversion. I would really appreciate all the comments with suggestions and your thoughts about the build. If you want to follow every part of the build series, please click subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss any episode. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye!